I grew up in the child dependency system. I was an abused child myself. Around the age of 13, 14, the abuse in my home was witnessed for the first time. My father got scared. Child Protective Services had contacted him. So he hid his gun, said I had it. I was taken to a mental institution. I grew up in the foster system. I've been in the foster system since I was five until I emancipated at 18. And when I emancipated, I lived on my own. And at some point in my life, at around 19 or 20, I found that I had exhausted all my resources and had nowhere to go. And so I was kind of in a rut. After I was kicked out at age 13, I was homeless for four years until I was 17 and a half. Being in the streets was very traumatic for me. I was always scared of who was going to beat me up, no education, never went to school. I was always um, molested in the streets. She grew up in Inglewood. She was, she was born there as a baby. At three years, she was deaf. She had a fever and she lost her hearing. She, and then she moved her foster deaf family. One year she was staying there. I grew up in foster care from 10 to 18 and I uh, aged out of foster care at 18 and I became homeless. By the time I was 18 I exited the system to nothingness with a drug addiction and then I got pregnant and I had my daughter. I ended up on the streets and working as a prostitute. I entered the foster care system at 16, 17 a lot of different group homes and shelters, uh, foster homes, people's couches, and finally I just got tired of moving around. And I found these people who um, turned out to be pimps and I uh, was in the human trafficking at 17. I got arrested, thank God. We kick these kids out of the system or we tell them you're graduated at age 18 and have a good life. And they have no money, they have no parents to return to, they have no savings account, bank account, no car. Your end result is you're gonna end up homeless and some kids go straight from foster care to a homeless shelter, and that is just not okay. My best friend and I went out and we started telling the story of our kids, and this whole group of people started following, and they started giving little donations like $10, $5, and I had like $400, and we continued to do that. 10 months later, we had $180,000. We said, what are we gonna do? And we bought this little broken down house. The guys that were contractors said, this isn't enough, they knocked down the house, they built it up as a six bedroom, brand new house. Someone um, I came across told me, here, try this, call Lori Burns. And I'm looking at the car and I'm thinking, oh man, a transitional living. I was gonna give them the most beautiful message they've ever heard in their life. And they're gonna cry and be like, we want you, you're so wonderful. <laughs> and you know, basically that's how it played out in my head. And so I call Lori Burns. I get a, hello, Lori Burns. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> I really didn't know what to say because, you know, normally they don't pick up the phone. But then this um, social worker called me and she told me about the team project. So then I called Lori Burns and then the next week I was already here. I came to the team project from my last group home, uh, Children of the Night. The founder um, knew Lori's story and I contacted her and I've been living here since June. She started talking to me and she goes, you didn't expect me to pick up the phone, did you? And I said, no, <laughs> honestly, I didn't. And um, it's been fun. I really, I mean, I mean, we kind of grow together as a family and bother each other and annoy each other and love each other as much as the next one does. Uh, when I went into the house, it was very homey. I um, felt like I was immediately accepted. Lori made me feel like I was part of a family. Um, I have my own room for like the first time ever and uh, it's decorated really cool. I believe that where a kid lives is a direct reflection on who they are and I wanted them to feel something different this time and the difference I want them to feel is they are worth it and we give them every opportunity to create their dreams. What do you want to be? And I've always really loved fashion but I never thought going to fit in would be a possibility but now um, I'm in my second year and I'm really happy and I can go to school and get good grades without really having to worry about working entirely full-time or anything like that. They helped me get into community college and I'm trying to become a social worker. I want to change a person's life. Lori introduced me into cosmetology, told me that I should do it and I agreed to give it a try and it's exactly what I wanted to do like without actually knowing that's what I wanted to do. So the kids come here, we have a savings plan for them, 
We set them up with cars, we set them up with college, we give them paid job internships, and uh, we revive their lives. In addition to what we were doing, we thought this isn't enough. We said kids today live on technology. And what we did is we scraped databases all over the United States and websites and we built a database with it and we replicate that now through MySpace, Facebook, and we have a Hotels.com type interface on the web. And we created a cell phone service where any kid in the nation could text the word shelter in their zip code to the short code 99000 and it will return a safe place to go within their small vicinity within 40 seconds. My music is my sanity, but I love to sing and I love to uh, play my guitar just because it's uh, therapeutic for me. <laughs> but then I went and I looked at the kids in LA that were homeless, dreads in their hair, wounds on their feet. I mean, it's catastrophic to see a kid that's between 18 and 24 that's in such a bad shape. And do you know what it's like to be sleeping in front of a store on the street and know nobody's looking for you? and nobody's coming for you. Could you imagine how that feels at the age of 19? So I was like, okay, we need to do this. And within a very short period of time, a couple of days, someone handed me a check for 20,000. And then a couple of days later, somebody else that I was meeting with um, about a business meeting about something completely different, asked what I was doing. I told him, and he said, I'm gonna give you 5,000. And he started to write the check and then he ripped it up and he said, no, I'm gonna give you 20,000. So I had $40,000 and I met a man in LA that had a building that he wanted to do something special with. I figured in order to move into this building, I need 100,000. I started trying to save and I couldn't do it. So I came to him to tell him, you know, I've still only got the original 40,000 and I can't do it. And he handed me the keys and he said, Lori, build it and they will come. And I move into this big 1500 square foot place off of Venice Beach right off of the sand and I don't know how to decorate and it's just like a big white tissue box and so I start emailing designers saying can you help me I don't have much money it is over the top and they built in a full kitchen a TV room a therapy room a computer room I mean it is amazing today we've got 400 volunteers between Orange County and LA and I'm mentoring people in 22 other states right now to do what we do here and I'm just um, inspired by the people that are following us and the people that are helping us. I feel like a family in this home. Nobody judges me. They, they give me a chance. And I mean, I just like having my own place. I feel more stable than I used to feel. I have two tattoos. I have this one, it's Carpe Diem. It means seize the day. And for me, it's basically a sign of, you know, taking the next step. Because a lot of the times, like growing up the way I did, people have difficulties, you know, moving forward. And I have another one on my leg. It's a shield with a cross, and it has a ribbon across that says Veni Vidi Vici, which means I came, I saw, and I conquered. And, you know, I came into this world, I saw all those bad things, and I conquered it. I came over it. And so. She, no, she's working with the deaf people, deaf community. Okay, she works at catering, cooking food, and she gives it out. She's, she doesn't know what to do right now. She's planning to go to Saddleback College. Being in the team project is just amazing to see that people actually care about me. Like knowing my whole life, um, nobody did. So it's just refreshing knowing that people actually do care about me and do want to see the best for me and want to see my future unfold to all the possibilities I'm capable of. And it's just really a good feeling. And it's just what I needed and it's helped change my life. I didn't have hope before because I didn't have a family, I didn't have stability, and I didn't have somebody that was looking out for my best interests. And now that I have Lori and I have the team project, I have a lot of hope. We have awoken the community that something needs to be done here. And I'm just inspired by all the people that care about our kids that have followed us. They help me a lot out here, and that's why I like being where I'm at. That's it. On every lonely day And through faith she knows now She'll make it out one day Because she asked God to help her